Today we're going to check out how we can make something like this. This little application that I built here uses React.js and the eyedropper API. It allows you to upload images using a file input. You can then pull colors out of that image using the eyedropper API and finally copy them to your clipboard so you can use them in your project or whatever you need to use them for. This is surprisingly easy given that the eyedropper API is available directly in your browser so long as you're using Chrome, Edge, or Opera at least. Support is yet to come for Firefox or Safari or a couple of others, but I do still think that this is a super cool project that you could expand from here, add a bunch of other cool stuff, and and maybe even put it on your portfolio. I think that's probably enough of me talking, so let's go ahead and jump into the code. Okay, so I think we can go ahead and get started. I have a little bit of boilerplate code here. It's not too much, just a couple of stubbed out functions and some divs here with a little bit of state up here at the top. I'm in just a basic Next.js project. If you run npx create next app or however, just to generate your Next.js project, you're gonna get the exact same thing that I have. I literally just removed everything that is in underscore app, or sorry, uh, index.js and replaced it with my function or my uh, component that I have here. For our CSS, I'm just using CSS modules. I already have all of this written. I'm gonna be referencing it, but this is not a CSS tutorial, so I do not want to, you know, agonize over every little detail. And to be honest, there's not really all that much in here anyways. If you want, you can actually just go ahead and grab this CSS file from the GitHub link in the description and just drop that into your project. In our component file, I'm just importing that as well as use state. And again, I have these two pieces of state up here at the top and these stubs. So we can go ahead and start by just uh, ignoring the stub functions and all the state and everything for now, and just looking at our divs. So I will kind of like, uh, like I said, just reference the CSS that we have. This outer one is a class name of wrapper. And then we have these two columns. Um, if I look over at our CSS, we can actually see how that works. All that we're doing is using uh, CSS grid as well as grid template columns to create our two columns that we have here. I'm gonna give this a little bit more space. Uh, these are static at 450 pixels and one fraction. So this is not, uh, as it sits right now, responsive. That's definitely something that you could probably add pretty easily, but I felt it was a little out of scope for what we're actually trying to learn here. For the left column, which is this darker gray one on the left, I'm just making that the height of the screen and setting it to the full width of this 450 pixels column, giving it some background color and some padding. And then I'm adding a position sticky and a top of zero. That way, if we have an image that takes up a large amount of the space over here, so it goes like all the way down below the screen. As we scroll, we'll just scroll the image. We won't scroll this left side and the form will stay in place. For our right column, I'm just going to look at this top level stuff. We can ignore these down here for now. I'm just giving that some background color, some padding, and then display of grid place item center again to put that image that's going to sit in there in the center as well as position relative and overflow of hidden. I'm doing this because we're going to have a div in there with a big background image that's going to be scaled over the size of this entire column. And I don't want that to be visible outside of the column itself. Back over in our JSX, the first thing that I'm gonna do is start by adding some heading text here. Just pick color from image, save that. Now we actually have something else on the screen. And under that, we can go ahead and actually start adding in some of this functionality that we have here. This first piece that I added is a wrapping div with a class of form section. It has some kind of title here. You might wanna use a label. I'm just using a P tag, but then we have this input for our file. So it's an input with a type of file and it is only accepting images. On chains is gonna call this handle file input function up here at the top, which is stubbed out right now. But eventually what this is gonna do is going to take our file from this event change and it's going to set it to this image state that we have right here. For this form section class, name that we have right here. If I come over to our CSS, we can find that. All that's doing is adding a little bit of margin bottom 1.6 rem to each section. If I save that, we should now be able to add a file. So if I click choose file, I can click on one of these now and it should be able to pick it. But obviously it's not actually gonna show anything yet because we haven't actually implemented this function. We'll come back to all these functions after we have our layout done. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and add our color picker piece. So we have another div here with this form section class name, another title, and then a button here, which says open eyedropper. This on click is going to fire this open eyedropper function again, which is just stubbed out up here at the top. Right now, obviously that's not gonna do anything, but again, we will get back to that. And for these styles for this open picker button, we can find that, that should be right here. Pretty basic button styling, so just width 100%, some color here, font size, cursor, transition on the background, and then whenever you hover this, it's making it a little bit darker. The final piece that we need is to actually show this color state that we have up at the top. So if I scroll up, we have this piece of state right here for our hex values. This is what's gonna actually change whenever we do that eyedropper piece, but we're just initializing it with some hex code that I picked out. And this last section is just to actually view that and then copy that to your clipboard. So the div here has that same class name as the others again, and we have another P tag with our title here and then one button here. And the interesting thing about this button is probably the style piece right here, which is actually intaking that color. 
and showing that as the background color of the button. Whenever we click this, we're gonna call this handle copy color function. If I save that, we're gonna see that we actually have our color here, as well as some text in the middle that actually shows the hex code if you just wanted to write it instead. One thing that we're not implementing here, which would probably be useful, is to actually check for the contrast between this text color and the background color. Right now, this text color is just steady white, uh, but if you were, for instance, to use your eyedropper to pick something that was white, you're not going to be able to actually see the text. I'm going to leave that up for you to go ahead and expand on this uh, doing your own research, but that's definitely something you'd probably want if you were going to ship this live. For the styles for this actual button here, we can go ahead and find those. It's called selected color, and those classes are going to be right here. Just width of 100%, height of 150 pixels removing any default border, giving it some border radius. I've added this transition color so it actually fades between colors as you pick them. And then I'm just placing the text in the center and making it white. And that's gonna wrap up this section. The one last thing that I wanna add just for a little bit of sauce is a little shout out section. I feel like every time I see some kind of color picker utility on the internet, it always has some little shout out section for actually built it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one of those for myself too. Click it, load my link tree, whatever. Definitely not necessary, but feels like it fits the bill for this type of tool. And that is going to be it for this left section. We can go ahead and move on to laying out the right section. Afterwards, we'll come back and fill out these utility functions. For our right column here, we're gonna have two states, one in which we actually have an image and we wanna show that, and another in which we don't have an image. This image variable here is coming from our state up here again. This is initializing as null, and then whenever we actually change our file input, we're gonna set this. In the case that we do actually have an image, I wanna show both an image in the center of this column, as well as this other div, which is going to have a background image, and that's going to go over the entire background of this right column here. We can look at the styles for that. So it's all just under right column and then I'm just directly selecting them. So that's all down here. We should have already seen this right column classes, but if we look here, we can see the image and the div. So for the image, this is gonna be directly in the middle of the column. It's gonna be width 100%. Height auto, max width of 900 pixels and margin auto, just so it doesn't get too massive. Giving it a little bit of box shadow so it sticks off the page a little bit. And then a position relative and a Z index of 10 because I want it to sit above this div. For the div, which I'm also selecting directly from this right column, I'm just giving it a position of absolute and instead of zero, which is essentially the same thing as saying like top, left, bottom, and right, all of zero, and then a Z index of zero. Background size of cover so it fits the whole thing. Background position of center. And then I'm scaling it up a little bit. The reason that I'm doing the scale of 1.2 is because this this filter blur here is gonna give you this kind of weird little white uh, ring around the outside of the image. If you wanna see what I mean, you can go ahead and just remove that scale. But whenever we actually blur our background image, it just leaves a little bit of an artifact, so I like to scale it up. Filter blur, and then I'm just giving it an opacity of 0.5. Now, if we actually don't have an image, we do still wanna show something, so what I'm using for that is just this basic SVG that I got from React Icons, and that just looks like this. So it's just a little placeholder image SVG. And that should be all of our layout now. So we have our image input, we have this color picker thing, which doesn't work, and we have our button here for the color, which also does not yet work. We can definitely fix that. So I'm going to come on up to the top here and we can start with our open eyedropper function. Notice that I marked this as asynchronous. And the first thing that I'm going to do is initialize a new eyedropper. Again, this is not going to work if you're in Firefox or Safari. This is not a widely supported API, but if you're in Chrome or Opera, uh, this should work as expected. All that we actually have to do once we have this initialized is call the eyedropper.open function. And this is going to be an asynchronous function so we can await it. What this is gonna do is it's gonna return us the hex value of whatever pixel we hover over and we can then use that to set the state of our color. If I save that, we should now be able to see. So remember that this function is linked to this button. So if I click this, we'll get this little kind of eye thingy and we can just select like this gray color right here and we should see that our box down here turns into a gray box now. Now obviously we don't just want to pick the gray that's already on the screen so let's go ahead and implement this handle file input function that we have here. This is on our form input so it's going to take in an event from which we can pull our files. We can access those using e.target.files. If you upload multiple it'll give you an array but we're just going to take the first one and we're going to pass that to this url.createObjectURL method. That's going to take our file metadata and it's going to turn it into a a URL that we can actually use to display the image on the page. After that's done, all we have to do is set it to our image right here, which remember our image is the one that we're passing to our image right here. So like our image tag. Sorry if that was a little bit confusing, but our image variable rather is what we're passing to the image tag down here, both for our, well, our image tag as well as the background image right here. We can actually test that now. So if I go choose file, I can select one of these files. I'm gonna go with this one right here because it's super colorful. And when I open that up, we should now get all of our colors, which 
which we then can use our eyedropper to select. The last thing that we actually want to do to round this off is I'd like to be able to click on this to automatically copy it to our clipboard. And that's going to be super easy. So I'm just going to come over to our handle copy color function right here, asynchronous function. And I'm going to use the navigator.clipboard.write text function. This is an asynchronous function as well. And that just takes in our color. We can go ahead and save that. We should be able to click on, oh wait, actually I also have to add the alert. So under that, I'm also going to alert that we've copied this color to the clipboard. Save it one more time. And now we should be able to click on this button. It will tell us that we've copied this hex code to our clipboard and we can then drop that in wherever we want in our code or in you know Photoshop or wherever you actually wanted to copy this color from. And that is going to be all of it. There's definitely a couple of other things that you could do if you wanted to round this out a little bit more. One of them, for instance, that's super obvious is just making this responsive. You could do things like automatically pulling the palette out of the image, allowing drag and drop images would probably be really nice, calculating complementary colors, maybe you know calculating a color set for Tailwind CSS. There's all kinds of things that you could think about that you could use to expand this project into something a little bit more substantial. But this I feel like is a pretty good baseline for creating a pretty cool utility that you could put on your portfolio. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that. The source code for all of this is going to be in a link in my description if you wanna just grab that. If you learned anything from this, I would super appreciate a like and a subscribe. Other than that, I will see you guys next time. Peace.